Vox Box Podcast, Episode 24. Now I'm confused. Did Obi-Wan do it first, or did Jean-Luc Picard? What is thy bidding, Minus? There is a great disturbance in the book. The Vox Box Star Wars Podcast. Your source for Star Wars comics, news, and more. And now your host, Michael Corley. Welcome back to VoxBox Star Wars Comic Book Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Corley. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are covering Star Wars number 24. It is titled Silent Drifting. We open with the Millennium Falcon. It is being surrounded by TIE Fighters. It had come out of hyperspace to make minor repairs and come straight into trouble. One of the TIE Fighters manages to hit it on the side. It is now drifting. The TIE Fighters are closing in for the kill. The narrator says they are circling the Millennium Falcon like vultures, when suddenly the front and rear blasters fire simultaneously, destroying the TIE Fighters. Han Solo is congratulating himself that this move was because of special modifications he made for emergencies. Leia has some knowledge to lay down on Han Solo. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, it is already time for... Dramatic Reenactment Of course, having Chewie open that nice tempting hole and our shields for him helped. Chewie, calculate the jump to hyperspace while I check for damage, then get on to those repairs. Luke's right, Han. That was a masterstroke. Of course, Han didn't invent that trick. The Jedi Knights used it for centuries. And I know of an occasion when Ben Kenobi used one very similar to it. Yes, it's a story my father told me, of something that happened to Ben years ago, back in the days of the Old Republic. That reading of Leia reminiscing over Obi-Wan Kenobi was performed by Becca Benjamin. Becca is a blogger at the Cantina Cast and Coffee with Kenobi and the Bearded Trio. Becca is everywhere! Tell you what. Why don't you follow her on Twitter at URAngelB, that's U-R-A-N-G-E-L-B, to see all the awesomeness she's involved in. I'll have that link in the blog post for this podcast. Thanks, Becca! Yes, Leia is about to give us a flashback to the good old days. I really like that one of the things they show is in the old days when a ship was traveling through space, it could have dozens of different species. The Empire did not yet have its discriminatory tactics towards aliens. And in all of this, we see reclining in a couch, young Obi-Wan Kenobi. He is shown as having a debonair, devil-may-care beard and coal-black hair. That's when Obi-Wan is approached by a droid, a droid by the name of 68RKO. I don't know if RKO is a little reference to the old radio symbol, but hey, it works either way. He is going to enter the service of Bail Organa, and he's telling Obi-Wan that the crew doesn't like it when us mechanicals travel alone. They don't know whether to treat us as passengers or luggage. And so he was wondering if he would consent to act as his owner. Obi-Wan responds, I've never owned a living creature in my life, and I don't intend on starting now, but if you'd like to be my traveling companion, you're welcome to it. This, of course, is referencing Obi-Wan honestly saying, don't recall owning a droid. This is when a nasty fellow, a rat-faced fellow, is yelling at 68RKO, saying that this droid shouldn't be mixing with people. And that's when Obi-Wan trips him, (laughs) because now this droid is under his protection. The man doesn't take to that too well and is going to stab Obi-Wan in the back. Um, Probably not a good idea. Without even moving, Obi-Wan activates his lightsaber. It grows out from behind and stabs the man as he's trying to kill Obi-Wan. That's when another man asks Obi-Wan to come down and have a drink. Obi-Wan does not care for stimulants, but the man, Augustus Tyrrell, another rat-faced, dark-haired individual, he is saying that he has need of Obi-Wan, 
And Obi-Wan is declining, saying that he've heard about how he traffics in stolen goods, political betrayals, and slavery. But before the conversation can go further, there is a message from the entire ship. They are entering the Mersen asteroid belt, and they are shutting down all non-essential systems. Everyone is recommended to go back to their cabins. Obi-Wan takes 68 with him. After a while, however, they are approached by a crewman. The crewman is asking Obi-Wan to come to the deck to see Captain Quasar. Obi-Wan will come, but only if his droid companion can come with him. We find out why in the asteroid belt they see Mersen ships. These ships could be hostile, but they do not know. Obi-Wan advises caution and to wait to see if they take hostile action. However, this is quickly moving towards a conflict as the ships divert course, and we see four of them coming towards the large vessel. Obi-Wan recognizes that these ships would not have seen them otherwise in the asteroid belt. They must be receiving a signal from within the ship. In other words, there is a traitor on board. The captain is saying, this is a pleasure cruise. There, there's no traitors here. Obi-Wan is able to give them advice on when to fire. With his experience and with his knowledge of the Force, they are able to destroy two of the smaller, more maneuverable ships by luring them in close. However, the two final ships are coming at them simultaneously to pin them in and destroy them. Obi-Wan tells them to wait... Wait, three seconds, two, fire! And simultaneously, the large pleasure yacht is able to destroy the two small ships, both at the same time. How? Because he could sense them with the Force. Obi-Wan's droid companion is telling him that the message about a signal coming from inside the ship is being repeated down in the lounge, and a fight is starting to break out. Different people blaming each other. Many of them want to kill Tyrrell because he is known to be a criminal. However, now Obi-Wan is defending him. Even though he did not want to associate with him earlier, they have no proof that this man is a traitor. However, now the mob is starting to say that the two of them are in cahoots. Obi-Wan realizes that if this situation is not resolved soon, not only will there be violence in the lounge, but more Mersen ships will approach. He sees the device that Terrell had used to offer him a drink earlier. He pulls out his lightsaber. Terrell is saying, That's it, Jedi! They mean nothing to you! Cut the whole bunch down! But no, he throws his lightsaber, perhaps the first instance of a lightsaber being thrown, and destroys the small device. Without it, the ships begin to wander aimlessly. They, they can't lock on to the cruiser in the asteroid belt. Tyrrell is saying, I, I don't know how I can thank you. And Obi-Wan is saying, uh, don't try, Mr. Tyrrell. RKO, if you'd care to retire to our cabin, we might finish this journey in peace. And as we go back to the present time, we find out that the droid told this story to her father, and her father told the adventure to her. Luke Skywalker, who really has gotten to know very little about Obi-Wan Kenobi, really appreciates hearing this story. I love that C-3PO even mentions that RKO must have been a master storyteller. Han Solo is saying it's a good story, even if you did jazz it up with the Force. And they are trying to get back to the Rebellion, but there's going to be a problem, because the next issue is called Siege at Yavin, and that ends Star Wars number 24. I normally am not a big fan of, of flashbacks, but that was kind of a fun one. It was nice to show Obi-Wan as he might have been. This, of course, is long before the prequels, when we got our first official view of Obi-Wan. This is actually the first time that we got a view of what he might have been like as a Jedi at his prime. You have a wonderful day, and may the Force be with you. No! You failed your highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. Thank you for listening to the Vox Box Star Wars Podcast. Go to Vox Box Podcast. Dot com to see panels from today's comic. Have a great day, and may the Force be with you. Comic number 24. 24.